everyone happy Friday so um, I did end up picking up some books uh, when I tell you it's been pretty stressful and as I saw I think all but one of these are new releases and as they came out I have to admit I was really tempted I was really stressed out and stress buying is definitely my big problem when it comes to coloring stuff and um, so I managed to put them on a list and kind of wait for a while till I had a collection of four or five that I wanted to pick up at the end of the month so um, and I'll talk a little more about how that's going <laughs> in my like planner and monthly review that's on uh, like Monday or something like that Monday or Tuesday I think is when I'm going to do that anyway so I did pick up some new releases and a book that was on sale and so I figured let's go ahead and get started I tried to pick up a variety of books like I know Alexandra Francis has put out a couple I know Deborah Muller's put out a couple but instead of buying them all again trying to be a little more mindful where I do want to buy those books but like I'm trying to just get a couple books instead of a whole bunch of books right now Morgan O'Brien did come out with this one this is the Matchstick Mouse Big Adventure coloring book there we go it's well it's not a lot better but keep in mind when you buy these these are Amazon books but they are slightly smaller than your standard Amazon coloring book size I really love the pictures I was seeing in this one on Instagram I have not been giving my Morgan O'Brien books a lot of love lately well really, let's be honest I haven't give, been giving any of my books a lot of love lately but I feel like I can recharge it with this because this book looks adorable I think I'm still do I have all the Morgan Bryan books I might might be short a couple but I just definitely on my list of favorite artists thinking I might work on a marker page with some pencil or like colored pencil or the pastel pencils that's what I started doing in these books and I really liked it because the pastel pencils provided a little bit of shading but like what's cool about these images is they're not super large images so the pastels were just a tiny bit of shading which means the picture would work up pretty quick it makes me think a little bit of ratatouille and I had a sheet somewhere that I had written down the colors that I used for for her I think it's a girl the matchstick mouse is a girl I think not sure doesn't really matter but no I had specific colors I was using but I guess as long as you know if I start a new book and I use certain colors like I would like to use consistent colors instead of coloring but maybe one book I use a bunch of different colors so that is cute oh my goodness But yeah, I would like to, like I said, hopefully y'all see a picture maybe Sunday or something. I'm going to go ahead and do some filming today for, I think, Sunday and Tuesday or Wednesday. Otherwise, I would include this picture in there. We'll see. We'll see how it all works out and besides I'm gonna use pastel pencils anyway instead of the Arctic's 
These are really cute. <laughs> and this is on the standard Amazon paper. I know some of Morgan O'Brien's books have come out on the like glossier, higher quality paper. Ooh, there's an idea I hadn't thought about trying the colored pencils. I don't like using just colored pencils in, on Amazon paper usually because of the toothiness of it, but I hadn't thought about trying it on that glossy paper. It might be something to try. Kimberly Angel Kova came out with a new one, uh, 50 diminutive spring scenes to color. Again, I on a lot of these, I try to wait till I can at least see some flip throughs or screenshots. I'm trying to do that with most of the books um, just to make sure it's something that I want. And I do love the diminutive series. It's just, she puts out so many books and it's just, I could have, I seriously, at this point, if I had bought all her books, could have probably half, at least half a bookshelf of just her books but they're so cute they're so well done it's hard to resist so I didn't get her last one which I think was dessert miniatures I don't normally like coloring food a lot but that one does look really cute but I did end up getting this one I think right now spring and Easter are super appealing to me because I am sick of gray rain, 40, 50 degree weather. I want it to warm up. I really like this picture with the mountains. I really want it to like warm up and be spring. <laughs> Though, <laughs> my yard thinks it's spring. And I thought this was adorable too with the little sheep and the rainbow. Um, So this week we've had a couple days where, and, and that's something else, when it's winter around here due to climate change and everything going on, our winters are slowly not being consistent winters. Um, now it's like we'll have really bad cold snaps in like January and February like we had this year in January where we had that weird week of negative temps, negative wind chills, and a bunch of snow. We'll get like big events like that. That'll just wreak havoc on uh, like pipes and stuff like that. Um, those are mostly, oh, this is so pretty, in January and February. December is normally not super cold, but who knows anymore, right? Like I feel like now it's kind of a gamble as to what our winters will be like because Normally our winters are like 40 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 to 50 degrees is the typical high during the day. And I've noticed over the years it's getting where it doesn't dip below freezing as much at night as it used to. So our winters are warming up overall. And that's a problem because I think we've become, you know, Tornado Alley used to be kind of the Midwest. I think it's shifted a bit, to be honest, like us and Alabama and Georgia, or we're included because the biggest stress right now is during the winter months from pretty much like December to May-ish. We will get these warm spells where we'll, it'll be 70 or 80 degrees during the day it'll get all the way up to like 70 or 80 and then we get a cold front come through and that kicks off all kinds of tornadoes and storms and we just have these bouts of severe weather and that's normally where we get our tornadoes and that's normally where we get our most devastating tornadoes um, because of that crazy temperature change and also i i think this is definitely my favorite of all her diminutive book series. I think I only have a couple. I think I was actually thinking of getting rid of one or two, but I, I think honestly the spring one, the way it's laid out, is by far my favorite. Um, 
and that's what happened this week we had a couple 60 70 degree days and then a cold front come through and now it's back to cold and rainy and gross but we had fortunately not super severe weather here it was farther up north more towards uh, Chicago this time which is unusual but anyway I say all that is this type of up down temperature like wreaks havoc on my joints and my fibro like there's a lot of things I can manage with pain meds and stuff like that but man when it comes to weather temperature and pressure fluctuations there's just nothing I can do about that I just have to take extra ibuprofen to get through that and I've been aching a lot more this winter because I feel like we've been more up and down in temps since especially since the couple weeks after I got back in January so I am ready for oh I was saying all that to say I've got a picture and I have to post it on Instagram at some point the daffodils in my yard which normally don't bloom till March or April they're like the first thing to bloom around here when it, it gets warm enough they've already bloomed they were f out in full force this week real pretty I got a picture of them but I'm like it's not even the end of February like there's a lot of stuff that's probably getting ready to bloom right now that I'm a little worried if we hit another huge cold snap or two it might kill you know the forsythia bushes that they call them Easter bushes around here the bright yellow ones that flower in the spring the red bud trees like all those I like this with the castle um I'm like really worried like if we get uh, more freezing cold snaps that it's gonna kill the stuff that's trying to come up now which stinks because again it's just such a burst of color in the spring around here with like flowering trees and bushes plus it'll be curious to see what survived that week of like negative degrees we've actually had some bushes that have been killed off the last couple of years because of those crazy low temp periods we hit um, there's that's so cute there is a a lot of bushes and trees and plants around here that when it gets to like you know zero degrees or Fahrenheit and like negative 10 negative 15 it just they can't handle it and they die we've had actually a handful of bushes and flowers that have not survived those winter cold snaps so it's like we're having more extreme weather during our winter months than we typically do which is not good not good at all yeah I think I think I might give away the seaside scenes I think I might be keeping the countryside ones and I didn't get the winter time I don't like coloring a lot of houses and there but there's houses in here but there's a lot of scenes that I don't include houses and that's I think one of the reasons I like this one so much so very cute Alexander Franzese has like three books out right now um, she is killing it she's got Easter Mandala's um, fairy chibis which I do want um, and a um, coloring book that has the thicker line art and like m more not super complicated imagery and stuff it's like a country scenes or country items book um, which I'd like to have too but I have all these other TV books of hers and I haven't colored in them much so I was like and I do love fairies but I was like I'm gonna hold off I might even get the travel size of that one to try it out um, because I think that might give me more incentive to want to color in that one however out of the three the Easter Mandala's one I really want to get back into using my color cubes for these and like the Joshua Dunbar books because I had a lot of fun doing that and so I'm excited to maybe get back into that this month and I'll 
I can use any of her mandala books, but I think I'll be doing a lot of spring and Easter coloring. And it's kind of what I need, I think, to help get me out of this funk where I've just been so busy and not felt like coloring at all. Oh, it's so cute! And, um, I might put it in the description, not that I'm trying to tempt people, but, um, Color with Claire also talked about a lot of new releases that are coming up in March, and I can already tell there's a number of them that I've added to a list that are pre-orders. I've decided, with the exception of, like, Lulu Mayo, um, the artists that publish through Amazon don't typically do pre-orders. This is adorable. This might, I kind of want to do one, this one this weekend too. I tell you, the coloring I did earlier this week kind of awakened the sleeping coloring monster. Like now, now I want to color. I think I've gamed enough where I kind of want to break from my game and I want to color instead. But, um... I lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, um, I'll, I might link to that post. Color with Claire always is a budget killer for me. She's the one that got me, uh, helped me come across those Fox books I showed a few weeks ago. And it's, it's the, like, Japanese and Korean coloring books that really get me. Or anything that's not U.S., that because of the shipping costs and stuff, like, those really, those really are hard to say no to because they're beautiful. And I'm not saying, they are totally worth, honestly, those books I showed you a few weeks ago, like, given the number of images and the paper and stuff, like, I don't think, I, I don't feel like I overpaid for those books. They're gorgeous. Um, but they are definitely, uh... You can rack up a lot with shipping fees and stuff like that pretty quick with those. So, those are my biggest weakness. I think this we oh, this one's cute too. I think this month worked really well where I held off, like I bought some at the beginning of the month. And then even the ones that released in the middle of the month. Normally I buy these when these first hit. But I waited till the end of the month. And it allowed me more time to kind of pick and choose rather than just oh automatic automatic buy which you know I want to be able to do and I want to be supportive of these artists but I also have to be realistic about what I'm going to color <laughs> and it, I'd rather buy one of their books that I'm going to color a lot in than buy like three of their books and not really color in two of them as much or at all or I'm so overwhelmed by so many books maybe I don't color in any of them so but yeah I'll post that and um speaking of favorite artists I know RJ Hampson's got a, another Mr. Fogarty coming out next month and that's another trouble area where I love every book he puts out and I haven't been coloring a lot in them and every time I do, I love them. Oh, here's one from Spring Mandalas, which I did pick up, I think, over the winter. So I might be using both Spring and Easter Mandalas. Anyway, adorable. I love these books. Like I said, this and grabbing, like, a color cube palette that I looks appealing to me and then picking out the markers to go with that and just doing a straight marker with a little bit of shading and some gel pens like this is that's just such a comfort I, I really enjoy her books when I'm when I'm in the mood for something like that so this one was a little you know taking a chance on because I hadn't seen any flip throughs of this one yet um, Deborah Muller's had a couple out I think like a nature goddesses one that I kind of that I really wanted 
But then I saw this one, and y'all know how I feel about fairies. Um, I also love her risque books. So, um, I hadn't seen any pictures of this one, but I took a chance. Um, she's never disappointed me before, so I figured um, we'd see how this one goes. I've really been enjoying coloring a lot of Deborah Muller, like, in the past six months to a year. I've been having a lot of fun doing marker bases and then pencil over the top in these books. Oh no! Uh-oh! She's supposed to be like Eve? <laughs> Do not eat the fruit. Well, I'm going to show y'all. Oh, I love her little spiky pigtails. My hair is so short, I think if I tried to do pigtails, that's how mine would look. Boy, that would be fantastic if you were going out in public and, like, you didn't really want to talk to anybody and, like, people were asking you yes and no questions. Um, you could just turn your shoulder and show them. I'd like that idea. Oh, that's cool. I like her pinup type poses that she does with her fairies. <laughs> Almost like a, is it a raven or a crow that likes really shiny things? like? silver and reflective things. Whoa! Uh-oh! Whoops! Like, she's even like, uh-oh! <laughs> she's like, oh, nude beach. Okay. I thought she was just letting it hang out on a, I mean, it is a cloudy day, so you ain't gotta worry too much about sunburn. Um, I figured she was just letting it hang out for fun. I mean, if you're going to be a fantasy creature, why why not just do, do what you want, right? I imagine this being like the stalk of a flower or a plant or something. Like a sunflower, she's using it like a... Like a pole, for pole dancing. <laughs> I like that idea. Oh my gosh, that reminds me. I was watching a video where this girl does these really awesome transitions um, using lighted hula hoops. And it is, she, it's just so mesmerizing. Like, it's absolutely incredible. And this totally reminds me of that. It was something I liked the idea of so much that I was even like, man, I would love to get into this. But, boy, I don't know. Every time I try to get into something like dancing or anything, it just involves a lot of movement in my body. Like, I always end up flaring up tendonitis. And, and whatever part of my body is getting, most of the time it's my hips and, like, my arms or something and my legs and... I guess if I did it, I would have to go really slowly. I love all those tattoos. That is cool. And her long pigtails. Oh no! Ma'am! Well, you will be the last one I color in this book. <laughs> Heartless. So yeah, this is not a fuzzy, cutesy book, um, as you can see. If if this type of stuff, you know, hey, not gonna yuck anybody's yum or or make any judgments here. Some people, this is not really their thing. That's totally cool. But I I dig it. I think it's pretty cool. I like a variety of imagery.
I would fall on my face. I would get so hung up. Of course, she's got her wings, so she she's not going to fall on her face. But kind of like a Catwoman thing going on. I love those with her little toes sticking out. I kind of like those. But, you know, being a big gal, um, it can be, it can be a little difficult to wear, like, thigh-high uh, tights or uh, stockings without risk of them rolling down. And the ones that are made really well that don't do that are, like, you know, really expensive. So, I don't go out enough. Boy, that would be a sun weird sunburn pattern, wouldn't it? On her legs. I know, I'm going a little slow today with my flip throughs. I'm just, it's been a decent week. And it's just been nice to have one decent week in a long time. Oh, I love her. Love that little, like, um, genie ponytail thing she's got going on. Love that. Boss babe. Some devil fairies in here. <laughs> A little, when pigs fly, I guess. Is that, is that what we're doing here? She's almost like got some Medusa hair going. You can make those like little bitty snakes or something. Ah, there you go. Very cool. Like I said, definitely different, but um, I like that about her stuff. I also like she does a huge variety of body types, as you noticed. Like, um, she's one of the most, I think, she's one of the coloring book artists I know that does the most variety when it comes to body types in her art. And that's, I always appreciate that. So, I think that's cool. Last but not least, um, this was normally $12 US and I got a notification it was on sale for $8. It was, um, is it Tammy that showed this one? And I kind of put it on my list for later and when I saw it was marked down I was kind of tempted. And so here I am. Uh, color and Reveal Animals. This is a different color by number book than I've gotten before. It is a, well, a Thunder Bay Press book, which I actually do have some of those, but this feels like a different format. So it's 20 images. Um, it's like a color and reveal, like a mystery color. So um, each page uses different shapes and patterns that kind of create like a puzzle, but you have to color it to reveal the animals. Which, I always love mystery colors. So they have, the setup of this is a little different. They have the puzzle page that gives you a hint. Like, Cheeky Chatter, Noble Recluse, King of the Woods. They have, like, mystery titles to these. They have a, a description of the animal. Then they have a color scheme and, like, a small little thumbnail look of the of the puzzle um, but then you get the full puzzle on the template page the full color in page and then the solutions are in the back as well um, so this formats a little different I don't know if I like the the back and forth of the color palette versus the actual page itself but because they're trying to get you to guess what these are beforehand and stuff like I see why they did it this way I just I would almost rather just have the template 
either one template that you use all the colors across or a different template that's like on this side and then so he, yeah here's the full color key which you technically could just use this if you want to and it's a 32 color key which is interesting um that's not not the most i've ever seen you get like a light pink dark pink light purple dark purple dark blue light blue some of these colors like there's a rose there's a kingfisher blue possibly an olive green or lime green you might struggle a bit to find uh, sand in like a 50 set like a small set of markers so this might be like a hundred set of markers um, you could probably find enough colors to work in here so um, I usually think color by numbers with palettes around 25 or 26 colors with a lot more basic colors are more versatile given you know if well pencils or markers I tend to use markers but um, but this can be done I mean like I said a hundred set or even a 72 set of pencils could probably be converted to this depending on the set and it talks about how these are laid out just like I just kind of described them so here are the puzzles Noble Recluse. So this majestic nighttime warrior hunts alone. It's orange eyes bright under the moonlight. Large but fast. This intimidating animal is also a good swimmer and will take a dip to cool down in nearby lakes or rivers. Its coat pattern is believed to be as unique as the human fingerprint. It is a true survivor padding around the Asian continent for the past 2 million years, though fewer than 4,000 remain in the wild. So these are the main colors you'll use from the overall palette the um actual page is page 35 so the pages are numbered so it's not as bad these are single-sided too which i appreciate yeah so this is the page as you can see it's hard to tell what it is exactly from the page because it's supposed to be a mystery um and then the solutions are back here and i'm not going to show the solutions because some people like to be surprised, but you can kind of see here, they show the full colors of them. Um, so. Interesting format. It doesn't have a ton of pages, but that's okay for how it's set up. I sort of understand. I don't necessarily need all this. Like I said, I would have been happy if you had just put like the palette on one side and the full page on the other and like, well, I mean, you could have even included this. So you could have done this, had the full page here, and then had the solutions at the end of the book. That would have allotted you maybe 20 more pages. The only problem would be if you colored this page, it would bleed over to this one, which if you do color by numbers that have that set up is a known issue. And you could always start from the back and work your way to the front if you wanted to. Or maybe you, you have the full color palette at the beginning too. So that's my minor critique on it like i feel like for the price of it, it should be more than 20 images but i like it i'll be curious to try it it's single page the paper is fairly thick so i think this will do really well with markers and so yeah we'll see how this goes but that is all i have for you today like i said in March I'm going to try very hard to just as I I have a feeling between now and like May we're going to see a lot of coloring books released that are spring based um, summer based uh, this just feels like this is a period where we get a lot of published books and right now anytime a book is released I'm just putting it in a list to look at either my coloring book list that I have that I keep or if it's a pre-order, I'm putting it in a separate list because I want to see flip throughs on those anyway before I like add them to my main list. And so I'll probably wait till mid-March, the end of March, um, before I buy, like, I'm trying to make it so I like buy maybe twice a month. So, um, 
we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I think March is going to be a big month for publishing books. Just as an FYI. Um, prepare yourselves. <laughs> All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this. I am really eager to get into these books. I'm hoping I have the time this weekend, but I also want to get a lot of videos done. So this is going up Friday night. Sunday, I'm going to have my Artix Color Pencil Collection Review video. Um, and then Tuesday or Wednesday, we're going to talk about my planners and and sort of how my February went. Um, I'm not really going to have a completed pages this month. I did do one more picture, y'all, and it was another Foxy February picture. So I did three pages for February, which is triple the amount I did in January. Um, but uh, we're going to go over like mostly my planners, probably around the middle of next week. And then next weekend, I'm probably going to start my coloring book collection. I'm hoping to have a complete pages at the end of March, um, if I can finally get back into it. But, um, yeah, that's kind of the plan. And I'm going to be doing some recording probably today and tomorrow to ensure that those are scheduled. So if things get really busy, I don't miss out on the opportunity again. So... For those of you that participated in Fox February, thank you so much. I have um, some posts to go through on Instagram because I've been quiet on Instagram too. But um, it did look like we had, you know, a few people participate and I really appreciate it. I just think it's a fun month and um, I, you know, whether it's just me or if other people want to join in, that's fine, um, but it's just something that I really just enjoy doing from year to year. So, probably won't have another tag. I don't know. I have tag ideas all day long, but the only other one I know for sure that I do every year is Watercolor Summer and Cattober. Or the only other two that I absolutely, without a doubt, will do every year. Um, you know, barring life. If I do another one, though, I will let you guys know. So, thanks for watching. And, like I said, be on the lookout Sunday for me coloring some more using the Artix pencils. Um, I did do a full demo with them on watercolor pencil Wednesday. So, if, I might put that here up in the top right if you want to go back and take a look at that if you missed that. Um, I love that picture. That's like a, probably my favorite picture I've done this year. Um, which, out of four pictures, that's not a big surprise. But I think it's going to be one of my favorites for 2024. I just love it so much. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. And bye for now.